That makes two of us. I can't hear him. He must be on the other side of my beam or something. Now what are you running? That's more better. More better? That's right. Hey, Ron. <coughs> Night Train's eyes get all big when you saw that? Of course they do. Well, if it got real big, you'll be wheeling and dealing that radio out of you. up north or something. Well, supposedly tonight Dave heard him first and then uh, contacted. Then I got a piece of the action that he was up in Wilkesbury. Yeah, it's to the north. Stop at the Stegmeyer Brewery and uh, pick up a six or twelve. Hey, that's right. I'm having some lion's head right now. That's right. That's made there too. Hickory Run. That's on the eighty, right? Right before Hickory Run. 
Ah, the one where the McDonald's is. Yeah, that's on pretty good ground there, because right way after you pass that, you start going down the other side of the hill. Yeah, I was uh, earlier uh, this evening when the noise was still in there. Copy on the Hickory Run Travel Plaza. 44, you got a, a hum developed. Is that just the mic cable or something? No, now the hum's going. Yes, sir. I know exactly what it is. I got it set on top of another radio. It's only humming because it doesn't know the words. That's right. You have to keep your finger in the dike? No, I just can't shut the mic down on the, on the other radio and talk. Right there, the hum's there. Wow, that's scientific. What are you doing, picking up the uh, power transformer or something? Yeah, I remember doing that years ago. Set it down on top of a power transformer and it couples the hum. There's quite a bit of uh, AC magnetic field there uh, around those transformers and it'll couple right into a high gain microphone. Oh, even through a solid piece of sheet metal. Well, you gotta remember it's a mic cable too. No, coiled, coiled one's usually better, I guess, because it has a, a bit of a natural inductance to it that's uh, probably good for RF feedback-related uh, stuff. sources of electrical interference. I guess uh, they wouldn't need guys like you to fix it. That's right. They don't like that answer, though. Yeah, nobody likes an answer that, that, that means that they're going to have to spend money. Well, I get the, you know, well, it worked before. I'm like, well, yeah, how many Windows updates did you have in between now? <coughs> yeah, you might have a virus on there. Machine that works, a Windows 95 machine that works, an XP machine. 
machine now. I will keep one of each, like, air, you know, in case I get some cool equipment that's got to run on it. Windows 3.1, oh my god. That's like the Stone Age. Yeah, yeah, I even have the original laptop. It was made by Tandy, Radio Shack, and it had the very first Microsoft operating system on it. DOS 1.0? Yeah, those things aren't, <laughs> they went over really well, I can see. Say what? Yeah, I hear some people in there, in the background. Hello, train. Hello, barefoot train. Hello, barefoot. Something don't sound right. Yeah, we hear you out there, Henry. Well, you're making it pretty well. I had to point the beam down that way a little bit, but uh, we do hear you. No pain, no strain. Always room for more classic operators on Classic Radio Roundup. friends down there I don't hear so well but I hear him
Yeah, it's all distorted. Don't sound good. I see noises and I can taste sounds. Yeah, you must have been smoking the good stuff. Yeah, the butter knife is the uh, the alignment tool of choice uh, at the Zero Five Radio Repair Technical Institute. times better. Yeah, signal got stronger and, and the audio cleaned up. Roger that. Is it loud enough? Well, it's loud enough for me, but it sounds like a stock mic. That's good right there. Right there is good over here too. <coughs> hey Roger. All right, thanks guys. Oh, I got some trouble shooting to do, man. Well, just don't shoot yourself in the foot. I'll try not to. Doc Hammer, night train, base station, waving at you, Braga Braga. It's nice to know that the uh, the 441 uh, base uh, location is going to be represented in some form tonight, since he's not home, since he's not going to be around. Yeah, I guess Pete must have had the uh, audio level set for sideband because you're not, you're not all that, not punchy tonight. It's kind of out, down there in the mud. And since he's not around to change anything, I guess you're kind of stuck that way. And I guess your internet connection is giving you trouble too because you're kind of chopping up a little bit. I heard you, Doc Hammer. I heard you, Doc Hammer, even in. Been running during the day, huh? Yeah, for later. Yeah, for an hour or two, yeah. Where's the door? 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 
How's this mic sound? Sandbagger sound all right? Any, does it sound tinny or anything? No, it's got a good sound to it. What is? Is that the 776 mic? No, that's a Mark uh, three with a 254C Turner mic. 254C mic? Yeah, if you turn it down enough, you got tons of audio with just a little bit of carrier. Can't beat tubes. He's out for the evening. It's his anniversary. Who? Uh, <laughs> 64, okay. Matter of fact, he'll hear it. He'll he'll hear it right now on the on the video gate. So <laughs> when he catches up on uh, what he missed tonight. Ten Roger, right on. Yeah, I know if he's coming down from uh, up that area, you know, there's some, some dips and peaks and valleys and that night I drove up that way and, uh, you know, I was coming down 33 and uh, I'd hear people, then I wouldn't hear people, then I'd hear people. Of course, the skip was the main problem, but uh, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, journey, you know, in between all the mountains and the valleys, what you hear for one minute and what you don't hear the next. Well, that could be, you know, you run all this radio junk and something's bound to break. You're humming that tune, Dave. No, I'm not. Yeah, I know. When I said I wanted a Hummer, that wasn't what I had in mind. No, and I'm learning to tell the difference between 120 volts, or 120 hertz and 60 hertz. Well, that's true. I mean, uh, when you get rectified full wave uh, DC, it's uh, it's going to be 120 hertz, which sounds a little bit different than uh, than acoustic coupled 60 hertz.
was pretty cool on the forum. Uh, it was a 2600 came in there and he was saying, you know, he was going to get to the bottom of it. And he found that <coughs> some mom kind of put the heater circuit on a tube or something. Yeah, he didn't like my uh, question when I said, you know, why go to all that trouble with the dropping resistor? Just run 12 volts to the tube. Because <laughs> it's a 12 AX7. And he's like, well, then I have to cut three traces instead of one. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah, I caught that too. Well, maybe he will post it, it you know. I know, see, he comes in from time to time and then he's not in for a while. So maybe he will come back with them photos. Yeah, I, I like to try to uh, keep it to the minimum amount of parts necessary. And uh, God made us, God gave us Dremel tools to cut little traces, so not a whole lot of work. That's right, the Dremel tool was one of those tools you need in your CB repair toolkit. Right next to the mallet and the uh, butter knife. If you enroll now in the 05 Radio Repair Technical Institute, you will get this toolkit absolutely free. One each Dremel tool, one each golden butter knife, one each high voltage capacitor supply. And one Russian tube, guaranteed to give you brain cancer. Yeah, I did a little bit more cleaning up on the forum too. Got rid of some of the crappy uh, codes that don't work anymore, and added a new section for uh, hi-fi audio. In case we wanted to talk about that kind of stuff. <coughs> oh, cool! I'll document uh, my conversion of a, a Cobra. Although I think it's very simple on those on the two thousand. Yeah, I sort of had you in mind when I created that because I know you had said you wanted to try that and other people had made comments about it. And I have my uh, my Galaxy radio that I did and I do want to revisit that area a little bit more uh, at another time when I have some time. I also wouldn't mind trying it on a different radio just to see what I can get. Oh cool, yeah. If you can recollect and just post something about how you did that, you know, I'm sure we all have a bunch of 3600 uh, boards laying around, we'd love to try something like that on. Well, even if you didn't even use the equalizer, uh, some of the, I did a mod to the microphone amp that, uh, that widened it, I had to basically take the uh, frequency uh, filtering components out of it and just make it a straight amplification uh, uh, gain amplifier. I don't remember the exact values I ended up using, but uh, that was that was a pretty easy thing. Well, it was a pain, but it was it was you know once you've done it's done. You know it's not that big of a deal. There's still a little bit of an issue though. I, there's something I wanted to try to nail down was the uh, uh, the final uh, modulator still seems to roll off below 80 hertz or below I'm not actually below 180 hertz, and I have to use a whole lot of equalization. Uh, to, to compensate for it. I want to see if I can't uh, get that thing to go down lower in frequency. It has no problem, ironically, going up in frequency. I can I can go to 8 kilohertz uh, without a darn bit of trouble. <laughs> Not that I want to go that high, but, uh, but going down is tough. Yeah, I was always impressed with the frequency response on, on AM, you know, get down to 30 hertz. That's pretty darn low. <laughs> Well, I got mine going down to about 80. Initially, it was it wouldn't go below 300, and I got it to drop to 180. And then with the equalization uh, compensation in there, I can get it down to about 80 before it really starts to fall off. But I want to see if I can get the radio to 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 go a little lower on its own without the help of the equalizer. Use these desk mics and stuff, and they they really weren't made for 
for a whole lot of uh, audio, you know, below eight, 800. Yeah, you're right about that. You need a really good microphone. Unfortunately, I don't have one. The best I can do is that, that Turner Super Sidekick. That's got a fairly flat response, but I, it doesn't go any. But I don't think it goes high above four uh, kilohertz or three and a half, you know, three hundred fifty or three thirty-five hundred hertz. But it's uh, it's a, you know a D one hundred four is a lot worse. That's that's that thing pooches at like three kilohertz and rolls off going back you know down and it's not flat at all it's d104 is a horrible microphone from a from a frequency response perspective <laughs>